public office of whatever rank and stature is a high trust. Every officer who abdicates his or her professional standards or engages in corruption or neglects his duty because they condone crime through their slack or complicit conduct. They are facilitators and collaborators of terrorists and criminal activity and must be discarded from the system and dealt with firmly. Over one year, a group of brave Kenyans recorded these images of policemen doing the exact opposite of what they swore to do when they joined the service. These videos have given you a front seat to a level of criminality within the police force that leaves the image of a functioning traffic police department badly damaged. Police demand bribes with impunity, and when they aren't given what they ask for, the consequences can be severe. You know, after viewing the footage of corrupt officers taking bribes again and again and again, I've asked myself two questions. One is, how can this be called petty corruption anymore if in individual police officers' accounts there are millions of shillings and collectively billions of shillings are collected every year from corrupt practices? The second question is one that I think a lot of other people are asking after viewing this series. Where's the accountability? Where's the Office of the Inspector General? Where's the National Police Service Commission? All of the agencies that are supposed to fight corruption in this country. It's time for some answers. And being an election year, this is the perfect time to get some answers. These politicians all had different ideas on how to fix this. What's your initial reaction to what is yeah, Very this? sad. They are an embarrassment to the police force. I hope this footage has been used to get rid of them, if they haven't been gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. They do not deserve to be police officers. Corruption thrives because it doesn't cause pain. Corruption thrives in absence of punishment. I'm sure if we say that a crime of uh, corruption was not bailable for 90 days, people would think, okay, I take that little 1,000 shillings like the police officer on the video. He start thinking, should I go in for 90 days mm -hmm. while my case is being determined? People will start thinking twice. Okay. You have to make it painful. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to deter. These police officers will not stop taking bribes if we don't deal with the mega corruption. Because they are the ones who are supposed to arrest these bad guys too. And they are saying, why us? When everybody else is stealing. And me, I'm only taking 300 shillings. The other guys are taking millions and billions and nobody is saying anything about them. I know that the Matatu business is giving bribe to the, uh, to the governor's office on a daily basis. You know so this. I know this as a fact, okay? I know that they take money every day. If the fish has rotten at the top, the body will rot. It's not a problem that arises overnight, and it is not a problem you can eradicate overnight, but there are steps you can take to eradicate them. So the first uh, concrete step is not belonging to a leader, it's the citizen, uh, duty is to elect leaders of, of integrity. That's number one. It's concrete because you go and actually vote. So that's concrete. Leadership aside, many attempts have been made to reform the police force. The most famous being a recent vetting exercise by the National Police Service Commission. Dozens of police officers were found to have millions of shillings that they could not account for. Dozens of junior officers kept pointing up towards their seniors about having quarters of bribes that they had to fulfill. Yet the vetting exercise didn't drain the swamp. 
These are just a few examples from what we've seen of officers who are vetted and are still on the streets. also showed this footage to the police. But it's very obvious. If, if you, look, you look at an officer saying, you said 500, you're giving me 300, and you can see he's counting the money openly. So you can look at that level of impunity. We have a problem. And uh, remember, I'm a policeman. This officer would not mind if he can be able to safely receive this bribe for a year or two, maybe he receives more than he can get in his, fun his, in his pension for the number of 25 years I've worked. So he would look at himself and say, fine, I would be sacked, but I can take a risk. I'm realistic in the sense that I know where it is coming from, and what's happening? I know where I've come from. I know the society I sit in. I sit in a society which elect leaders after they have been bribed. A society that fights a good person. A person that has integrity, that does not accept certain kind of behavior, that wants to do things the right person, in the right way, you know he's not a very popular person. And this is societal, accepted. Because in these vehicles, some of them are passenger vehicles. They are passengers sitting in that vehicle. If it is something so much irritating, 14 people against two, they can even arrest them. We have to do something as a nation. It's not something you would say, we would just do it in the police. We have to do it as a nation. And most importantly, we must make the police service a noble service. Mm. Let us make the police service a service of choice, not the worst alternative. So I've just been from an interview with a police spokesman. And to be honest, much as the police say that they're doing something, the feeling that I get is that they're almost overwhelmed by this because from recruitment, to training, to getting into the traffic department, to even rooting it out. Nearly everything has been tried, but this problem seems to get worse and worse. And it might be that something drastic needs to happen, not just within the police, but within Kenya's entire leadership. And this might be the time, this election period, to think about that. You know, we get the leaders that we deserve because we elect the leaders ourselves. We make very silly mistakes sometimes and then cry for the next five years. I think it is important for voters not to be emotionally driven and to know that it's them who are the kings, not the leaders that they elect.
On a regular evening like this, corrupt police officers will have collected billions of shillings from Matatu operators like these, and it happens across the country. Make no mistake. But after looking through the hours and hours of footage that we abridged for you in this series, you're probably wondering whether there are any solutions to the problem of corruption in our police force. I've been wondering that myself. Well, there are. And you don't even need to go that far to look for them. Evening rush hour traffic in Kigali, Rwanda, looks busy but tame by Nairobi standards. Look closely at the roads, though. Not a traffic police officer in sight. Very few traffic police officers patrol the roads here. Traffic lights work and the city moves. A majority of Rwandese citizens also use public transport, but corruption on the roads here is almost unheard of. Compare the story of Jean-Paul Karangwa to the stories you hear from Matatu drivers about traffic police in Nairobi. Why would there be that small an expectation that a bribe would be exchanged here? To Jean Nepo Mbonyumvunye, the Rwanda police's head of the Inspectorate and Ethics Services, it boils down to a few key things. Everything given to our officers are provided by our leadership, meaning the commitment of our leadership, the ownership of the process to fight against corruption within Rwanda National Police are becoming from the top level to low level. But if you consider the welfare of our people nowadays, it's good. But the, the welfare, meaning salaries, allowances, UN mission, promotion, accommodation, transportation, are not enough, are not enough. You have to but above all else, one thing matters. You remember, one Edward Griffin said that fighting corruption in government institution is the highest obligation of patriotism. This election is already filled with many promises about what can be done about corruption, spoken by many who themselves cannot claim to be clean. But there are vivid examples of what Kenya can do to rid itself of this vice. This is Malcolm. I first met him in 2016 after he and a group of Nairobians exposed the crimes of the city inspectorate in Nairobi's county government. Their bravery led to real action on the ground. Today, another individual, who we shall also call Malcolm, is among those behind this trove of footage on the police. So Malcolm, you expect that Kenya wengine wafanya nini ku ili wapingane pia na na corruption na ufisadi. Personally, me expect kila mkenya atumie ile staff yoyote ako nayo ku eliminate hii corruption kwa country yetu. Mm. To spodu hivyo tutaenda kwa na the wrong people na hawa wrong people wataenda kwa so powerful na sisi kama wa Kenya tutazidi tukisafa. Ndio ushawapata kwa kamera. Una expect nini fanyike? Though the system is corrupted, our police is a bit more careful because it is a collective way to be responsible responsible. So it is a bit more careful because it is a bit more careful because it is a bit more careful. This is more than just bribery. Turning a blind eye to graft allows for vehicles like this to be overcrowded. And a line can be drawn between this corruption and lives taken on Kenyan roads and laughter sucked out of homes across the country. But Kenyans have recorded and reported impunity before, with corruption threatening to destroy everything it touches in this country. 
Could it be regular Kenyans who save the day and put predators in their place? Let me 